It's quite here in this video. We're going to be interviewing my Sandico. She is the founder of PMCM Events Management, a very successful event management firm in the Philippines. And she's also the host of her growing uh, TV show, which is called The MySpace Show. So let's go check it out. My Sandico, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Um, this is the second time you've been on the show. And uh, I remember the first time, several years ago, we did an interview. It was in uh, it was in Makati, and we, it was just an audio interview, right? And um, and today I'm really privileged to finally interview you again, more face to face with a video, and you've gone from strength to strength over the years. So welcome to the show, Mice. Thank you, Kwa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, and um, this is the video version of, of the <laughs> audio, the very first one. Thanks for having me. And um, I'm so happy to see you once again online. Mm. And I'm so, so proud of you. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right. So uh, for those who don't know uh, who you are and your background, uh, before we get into how you built your business and built your, your amazing um, online show and, and all the amazing projects that you're working on, before everything, uh, I remember that you went to Dubai, right? You went to Dubai and you started working in sales. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, cool. I went to Dubai um, several years ago, many moons ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I went there um, as an executive assistant to the CEO first. That was my first job. And then I went to Ras Al Khaimah, one of the Emirates of the United Arab Emirates. So I worked in Rack Ceramics, one of the largest ceramic tile brand global and in the UAE. And I worked as an executive assistant to the CEO so just imagine 15,000 employees and wow. I work directly to the CEO, but it's just a few months. And then I transferred to sales and marketing job in Dubai. So um, I worked in one of the largest um, exhibit booth installer, designer um, in Dubai in Sheikh Zayed Road. So that's about more than two years. That's where I really enjoyed um, doing events because I met a lot of people and also I'm handling some accounts in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. Uh, we're designing and installing their exhibit booth and they're participating in the exhibit or exhibition or conference expo in the World Trade Center in Dubai. So that's where the e-commerce hub of Dubai. So yeah, um, that's more than two years. Um, I work with a lot of Filipinos and other nationalities as well in the company that's called Top Gear Promotions. Basically, I'm handling sales and marketing for, um, for the company. That's so cool. Um, so you, you didn't know, really know what you're getting into. You were just, you know, you just applied for the job or you offered the job and then you just started learning sales and then you started picking up with these cool skills in marketing, sales, and then you applied it in the Philippines. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Guess what? I graduated a bachelor of science and physical therapy it's a medical <laughs> course it's a five-year course but i landed into sales right away mm. um and i remember i clearly remember my manager says you know my you have a knack in sales and i was selling guess what um pension plan it's a premium pension, company. Plans. pension plan yeah that was my very very first job mm. after i graduated from college I wanted to work in Makati City, those high-rise buildings. Yeah. You know, that's the dream, dream of uh, a lot of uh, college students is to work in Makati. So I, 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 I um, applied for a job and then I did not know that we're going to sell a pension plan. And uh, my manager told me that you have an act in sale. You have, to, you have to be serious about it. And it doesn't have any basic salary. We're just commission-based. Wow, commission base early. That's commission that's daring. Base. There's no base or anything. Jeez. It, see, that's that's how yeah. naive I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I fell in love with sales and weekly I get commissions. I noticed that even though I don't have basic salary, I I get commissions on a weekly basis. But of course, as you go along, you know, you realize that oh yeah, this is not enough. So I looked for another job where in there's a basic salary and mm -hmm. also there's commission. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the viewers, um, they're, they're salespeople. Um, you know, they're always learning about sales. They want to learn how to increase their commission size and everything. So I was just curious about what would be the one tip 
for new salespeople to close more deals? What would the tip you would give them? Oh, okay. This is, um, I'm going to give some practical tips. I think yeah. that it works for me. Okay. So one of them is always look in your client's eye, eye to eye. So you have to give your 100% whenever you're talking to someone. So um, look them in the eye and give them your genuine smile. And um, in that moment, you have to give your 100%. Always listen, 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 and um, do not sell right away. Just mm. um, establish rapport, establish a business relationship with the person first before you, you deep dive into selling the products. I think that that really works for me. And of course, you have to be on time. You have to be punctual. You have, if you say um, the meeting is at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, you have to be there 10 minutes or 15 minutes before the time. Mm. Um, also, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Um, always, always assume that the client will ask for a discount. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be prepared with options. So if the option one doesn't work, there should be option two and option three as well. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So, wow. So it's, um, I remember like when I was in the Philippines, I've seen you sell. I've seen you in those boardroom meetings. I've seen you, you know, close those client deals as well. And 100%, you know, you, you, you have that ability where you look people in the eye. You build that instant connection, that, that rapport with people. And uh, I've seen it. It's like a spell that you have with people. So it's, it's really amazing. Yeah. And then which it's, a, goes, it's, a, it's a skill. <laughs> it's a skill. Quite a bit of practice, right? Yeah, it should yeah. it should be practice, really, really practice. And you have to have a lot of meetings. You have to have a lot of rejection as well. I've had a lot of rejection. You know, I think that's I told you some it. of them. Right? <laughs> that's how you deal with it. It's a yeah. that's how you learn, and that's how you improve yourself. And mm. you would realize what's wrong with you. What what always have room for improvement. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, so then, um, so you left Dubai. Uh, I mean, you, you're learning a lot about sales and, and marketing in Dubai in your job. Uh, and you learned how to you know, close deals and so forth. And then you went back to the Philippines, I believe, and then started PMCM Events Management. Is that right? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet? Okay. Not yet. So I got married. Yep. That's the reason why I went back home to Philippines, because I got married. That's right. That's yeah, the definitely. main. That's the main reason. That's yeah, the main yeah. reason. I don't. I didn't want to leave my job in Dubai. If mm. if I I I did get married at two thousand six, I would probably be still in Dubai. Dubai because I love my job. I love my boss. I love all the things that I'm doing there. And uh, I got home to get married, and then I did not go back to Dubai because I want to be with my husband. So mm. we put up our own business. That's the laundry and water shop. So that's, oh, that's right. Yep. Mm. Yep. Uh, it's in Sampaloc, Manila. And um, that's about five years, almost five years. But mm. then I asked my husband, this is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to have my own events company. So I asked Chris permission if I could, you know, leave the, the business behind because I worked, I worked on the business for more, almost five years. And I guess... I have brought a lot of clients, corporate clients. I remember Kwa, I would mm. go from one office to another without any appointment and I would bring my proposal and I will tell them, please order a water gallons from me and I will give you free dispenser for one whole year. Mm. And it worked. It worked. I, it's where I got my corporate clients just by walking in unannounced. <laughs> no appointments at what all. Else? So <laughs> unannounced, yes. And I remember this. There's no Wi-Fi in my office. It's a very, very small Wi-Fi. And what I'm using is my fax machine. Fax machi machine fax to, machine. to message people. And to message to people oh. and my yellow, yellow, yellow pages directory. So I have my landline, my fax machine, and my yellow pages. Since I don't have Wi-Fi in the office, and I would go to the internet cafe to print proposal. And after printing the proposal, I would go back to my office and fax them, you know, send all the proposals um, all together and I call them again. And I would go from one office to another and without any appointment. That's how I started the business. And then uh, after more than four years, I asked my husband, it's time for me to do what I really love. 
and that is handling events. So I started with corporate giveaways because you need corporate giveaways in events, especially on weddings and also on birthdays. Yes, that's mm -hmm. how I started the events company. That's, uh, that's really inspiring. Um, I mean, th these days we got access to the internet. We've got you know, Facebook ads, Google ads and everything. We got the webinars, but you actually built your business from a fax machine so, and in a bedroom. Oh <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing. It's so inspiring. Uh, okay, so that, that goes to the next question. So I take it that's how you got your first few clients, which was just sending, you know, fax messages, door knocking, just hardcore, just hustling, right? Just going out there and just knocking on doors and everything. Yeah, crazy. That's how I started, Pa. Um, okay. Believe it or not, <laughs> that's how I started. <laughs> wow. Okay, so um, so as you know, I mean, there's also tough times in business. There's people going through a lot of um, issues and in, in terms of uh, growing profits and getting leads and so forth. So what advice would you give to someone who's having this issue going through tough times in, in the business? What, what advice would you give them? Well, tough times would always be there if you are an entrepreneur. If you have your business, um, it's not always a bed of roses and there will always be challenges and obstacles no matter what, even if you're working so hard and sometimes life can be so unfair and unjust, mm. but this is what I believe. If you're an entrepreneur, I know you believe you have to believe in yourself and you know your talents, you know your skills, you know who you are and you can bank on that. Um, no matter what happens, even if you don't have money, but if you have the talent and the skill and you're using it um, wisely, um, something, something along the way will, will, you know, be, will prosper or will be successful. And a lot of business people also um, are, are always on the lookout on what kind of business ventures they would plunge into. And I'm like that. If ever this thing doesn't work, I would go to another business like during the pandemic, guess what? I was selling essentials. I was selling essentials like alcohol, face mask, face shield, using the Viber group in the community and also on online. And I was never ashamed of asking my friends, you know, I'm selling this face mask and I can customize it for you. I can put in your logo and they will order from me. And that's how I thrive during the lockdown. And also we tried webinars. Um, with PMC Events Management on our Facebook page, we organize series of webinars for, for us to showcase that, hey, we can do online events, even if there are no live events. But, you know, Kwa, I've been through those tough times, mm -hmm. um, really, really tough times. And I was depressed and anxious. Why do you think this thing happened? This is unexpected. We, had, we have scheduled events until the end of the year of 2020. And, you know, you were expecting those money. You were expecting those cash flow, but this thing happened. So I had to pick up myself for a while. I was depressed. I was really crying. And those, I also had this aha moment. You know, if others can do it, I can do it as well. So we, I started um, gathering my team and talking about virtual events. So we had series of events in PNC and events management, and we've had 7,000 views, um, those people also um, sponsors who really supported us and some media partners helped us in promotion. And in that way, they were able to notice PMCMO, they can do online events, they can do online events and slowly and surely right at the third quarter or fourth quarter of 2020, we were accepting online events already. It took a while, but but hey, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. And this 2021, we've handled big events, big online events, and I'm so proud of it. And I'm so proud of my team who are working from home. And I believe that I can also help freelancers, freelancers, those who doesn't have work. I, I give them projects and they work from home. And for me, that is, that's an achievement at this moment, at this uh, trying times. Mm, yeah that's one of the first things i noticed about you was um you know during these tough times when a lot of people will just freak out and they'll just um, do whatever it takes to take care of themselves but you're doing the same thing but you're also using this opportunity to still help other people at the same time i mean in your events in your uh, online 
shows and everything, you, you, you're still giving away things. You're still giving away things to the viewers and, you know, you, you're still helping other people, even though you're going through this tough time. So it's really, you know, inspiring to see that, um, what, what you're going through, uh, which leads to the, the next question. I mean, you built MySpace show, right? You built the MySpace show during, you know, during the lockdown, during the whole pandemic and everything. And I see all these views, you know, you're posting on, on your Facebook, you got so many views as well. So, so can you tell me, how did you build this up? What did you do? I saw so many guests and everything. How did you start this and grow it to a certain point at, at, at this present time? I wanted to do something because I'm working from home. I cannot go out and I wanted to, to give something um, I wanted to be relevant. I, ha I wanted to connect with people who are also entrepreneurs like me. And I believe that um, internet or Wi-Fi or social media is a blessing. And um, it's so powerful that you can reach out to a lot of people. Uh, some people you do not know, but they would appreciate what you're doing. And it's my space is just like that. It's really empowering mom moms. It's really empowering entrepreneurs. It's empowering business leaders and business owners. And I wanted to do that ever since, but I didn't have much time because I was very busy with events. I think I've mentioned this to you. Yeah, yeah, ago. I remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I wanted to do that, um, but but there were no uh, um, chance or time, enough time. So pandemic, um, lockdown, I'm not doing anything at home. So I just bought my ring ring to ring lights <laughs> <laughs> nice. and make use of my wi-fi and i asked someone somebody to help me out uh to use the stream yard and they they said yes right away and i gave them my concept i gave them my program and also bart abaya i would like to say thank you to global tv 168 and bounce back network who has a lot of followers and they really they really paved the way um Without them, the live streaming um, broadcast uh, link or platform, I wouldn't be able to, to, to do It's My Space Show. So It's My Space Show, I just recently launched it April 25, 2021. And my very first guest was uh, Rebecca Bustamante, made to, made to maid. Uh, she was a um, uh, domestic helper in Hong Kong, but wow. really made big and now, producer of Asia CEO Awards and who was elbow to elbow rubbing rubbing elbows and you know with with CEOs all, all around uh, the Philippines and uh, it's amazing because um, there are brand partners who are helping me out oh well I want to give something to your show we're willing to raffle out items and some of them also pledge cash because they believe in the show and we have avid followers every Sunday who are moms and also entrepreneurs like me. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And um, I do the script. I prepare. You know, you have to be mentally prepared, physically prepared, and emotionally prepared. And we practice before the show. We really practice, me and my director. Yeah, we practice and we follow the script all the visuals we prepare for it. So that's why whenever we have show in It's My Space, they will tell me it's like an event. It's not just the usual live, um, live show that you get to see online. So I wanted to, to do that because I'm an events organizer. So I wanted to, to be prepared as well in every episode. And I am very thankful for all the followers of It's My Space show. It's doing well. It's doing well. It is. Yeah, yeah. I noticed... Uh... Yeah, I saw the progression. I mean, I saw that you're, you're doing interviews and stuff on TV and then you did the radio as well, but you got really busy. It's hard to keep that going. But with the MySpace show, I, know, I noticed that it's more, it's like your passion. You can see your passion really shining through. And I can just see all the sponsors just appearing on the, um, on the live stream as well. And you got people, you got fans commenting and, and you're up there, you're, you're commenting on those comments as well. Um, you come a really long way. It's, it's not easy to, to get to your level because a, a lot of podcasters, you know, it's hard for them to get someone to sponsor them, right? But for you, you've already, you've already got sponsors, you've got the views and, every, and everything. So it's really amazing. Um, so well done on that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for- I have an amazing, I have an amazing viewers. I have an amazing audience. 
And yeah. I want to thank them for because they're, they're always commenting. <laughs> so the comment box is so busy. There's a lot of comments and questions. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy they're engaged. Mm, 100%. Okay, so um, how about some of the, the books or courses and, or mentors that's influenced you the most? I'm just curious, uh, who, who would that be? Can I say Kwabui now? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're one of my Jeez. best friends in the planet. Oh no, just, um, well, aside from Kwabui, <laughs> yeah. I love I love reading Chicken Soup for the Soul ever since. Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, by Jack Canfield, the Jack Canfield and mm. Mark Victor Hansen. It has all the uh, stories of real life stories of people, you know, and I would really um is it it's a validation that there are angels here in, on earth if er, when, when, whenever i read their stories another one i love dr ivan meisner the father of modern networking in dni who talks about givers gain philosophy and it's one of my favorite philosophy in life when you give you will receive more mm. you will receive more and he also talks about positive attitude and community um, lifelong learning and um, business relationship and also innovation and technology. It goes hand in hand. In, in the business, you have to follow and go with the flow in terms of technology. And that's what he really is passionate, of, passionate about. And yeah, those things. I also love um, re, uh, listening to podcasts. I love um, the men in, hap, hap, in pursuit of happiness. Chris Gardner. Oh, Chris Gardner, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that was yes, inspiring. I love story, him. Yeah. I, that was really inspiring. I was, I had the privilege to watch him live here in the Philippines when he came here, and I attended the uh, Millionaire Minds, and he was on stage. I would really cry <laughs> just by just by hearing him talk, and is he's he's really inspiring. And there's a lot of there's a lot of people that I really uh, admire uh, local and abroad, of course. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I remember watching The Pursuit of Happiness. Chris Gardner is such an inspiring story how he started. And uh, yeah, once again, it was sales, right? That, that drove him to the top. So it's, it's all about sales and closing. Sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, then. So I'm just curious about, uh, let's say that the, the lockdown or, or the pandemic's finished. Uh, and you, we get to go out again and, and build the, you know, go after our goals, build the business and everything. What would, what would you do? What, what, what's the first few things that you'll do straight away? Would you get back into hmm. events, movies, or I'm just curious because I've seen you've done movies, you've done the events, box screenings. What would you do? Actually, I'm not too prepared. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I, I really am not yet prepared to, because a lot of clients are asking me, what do you think my 2022, yeah. will there be live events already? But knowing the situation here in the Philippines, we're not, everyone is not yet vaccinated. So it's, it's really scary uh, to go out. And me as a mom, I have two kids and um, I think I'm getting used to being here at home and yeah. uh, watching over my kids. I'm getting used to it. And there's online events. I can communicate with my editors, my uh, videographers, my team online. I'm getting used to it. But I also miss live events because we Filipinos, we are very emotional. And whenever we see our, our clients face to face, that really, you know, establish a solid relationship with them. Uh, you get to spend time with them, the people, right? and the people I get to establish business relationship with outside. So I really must miss those times as well. So hopefully, and I am praying real hard that everything will be okay, uh, 2022. And I'm not 100% sure if live events will be will be okay, but um, I'm praying for it that slowly but surely. Uh, 2022, I'm not really expecting 100% that live events will be, you know, in full blast. But slowly, I guess, it's, uh, it's going to improve a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, hoping one day we'll go back to the Philippines and attend one of those block screenings of yours. 
I remember going to it. It's just, uh, it's really cool. You, you got, you're hosting it. You got people, you know, presenting. You got singers. You got all this. You give away. You all you got all these giveaways and so many great reviews. So, looking forward to uh, attending another one of your events one day. So, <laughs> it'll be really good. Okay. Um, okay. So I've got another question. Uh, let's say that you were to go into a time machine and talk to your younger self. What would you say? Uh, how young? <laughs> <laughs> You're not that old, so don't, don't worry, Mice. Uh, just say a bit I young. Am He's old. younger. <laughs> <laughs> I am 46. I'm very proud of it. Um, yeah, of course, of course, there's a lot of things that you would want to do or would love to do again, those stuff. So if, if I'm going to see myself, uh, well, I would tell myself that uh you could have you could have spend more time in self development stuff because my my i remember my parents they really support me with the things that i love so when i told them that i want to i want to study piano they brought that they bought piano for me but then i did not take it seriously and now i am that's my son <laughs> and <Yeah>. now <laughs> Uh, he's running around and and now i wanted to play piano but i can't uh so that's one of my my biggest regret and i want to make song because i love i love doing poems and i want to create songs in college i shared some songs with our charismatic community and i think we we performed some a song to our program and I wanted to do that, but I can't do it because I don't know how to play piano anymore. Another thing is that um, <laughs> I could have, you know, I was I was good and very reserved when I was in, was <laughs> I was young, but but after college graduation, um, I started. I had I'm a late bloomer, so so I had spent some time with my friends and going around and. And I really enjoyed it, and I'm so thankful for that. For that, and uh, it's a good decision that I decided to to live a good life, high school and college, mm -hmm. and then after college, you know, um, explore more. And and also, uh, of course, I, I I want to tell myself that you are lucky. You are one lucky girl. You're the only girl in the family, the youngest, and everyone in the family loves you so much so be grateful be forever grateful because because i've been hearing a lot of things and stuff that some kids doesn't have don't have parents or some kids did not experience the love that they were longing for but me i was i was i was lucky and i was loved by my family being the only girl in the family and i and no matter what happens, I'm really grateful. And I did not experience uh, being, um, you know, they, my parents reprimand me, but they did not hurt me at all. So, so I, will, I will forever also be grateful for that. And I will, pro I promise myself to love my kids 100% and give them the love that I experienced when I was a kid. So yeah um basically that's it some other stuff i'm going to tell you personally <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's on part three we gotta we gotta get ready for part three <laughs> yeah i'm gonna tell you some secret <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you some of the secrets on on part three as well so <laughs> Go for that. that's amazing truly inspiring um okay so if people want to get in contact with you how can they uh, get in contact with you oh yeah um i'm always on facebook they can search me on Facebook. It's my Sandico, M Y S Sandico, S A N D I C O. They can also watch me every Sunday in It's My Space Show. That's from 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. We're live via Global Pines TV 168, Bounce Back Network, VG8 Radio, It's My Space YouTube channel, and Facebook pages of It's My Space Show and PMs and Events Management. And this coming Sunday, uh, I I'll be interviewing the winner of the Apprentice, first winner of Apprentice Asia, Jonathan wow. Yabut. Yes, uh, he said yes. <laughs> and Ooh. also, 
two, two, two business owners from BNI who's into real estate as well, uh, brokerage and also real estate um, selling. So hope you can join me. And also um, in our events, uh, online events, they could also find me. Um, I want to invite everyone also for our Asia, 12 Asia CEO Awards on October 12th. If you want to watch it on Facebook, that's on October 12, 6.30 p.m. Uh, you can uh, watch it via Facebook, Asia CEO Awards. And they will be awarding business leaders here in the Philippines. Amazing, amazing show. Mm, awesome. And you're also open for international guests as well. International guests and in, in business. Oh, oh yeah. Come, yeah. Okay, awesome. Sure, yeah, we, we, sure. I got a lot of, um, yeah, I got a lot of. Uh, viewers and, and listeners uh, all over the world as well so uh, I guess they'll just contact you through through your contact wow. link and everything yep awesome and Thanks, also to well. be guests on, on your show as well so they'll contact you too so awesome thank you thank no you no problems uh, more okay. power more power well hang on I got one last question um, about, where, hmm. one more question, question. Yeah. Ne next few <laughs> years what do you see yourself in the next few years just curious so that I'll, I'll be 50 then <laughs> Wow, really? Still looking so young. Four years from now, I'd be 50. Oh my God. Um, so how do I see myself two years from now? Uh, I'm, I would still be in events, I guess so. And mm. um, I discovered I discovered also that being healthy is really fun. Yep, so, yep. And I, I'm enjoying brisk walking in the morning, light jogging, skipping a rope. And also around the park and the village, and also it gives me time to, you know, meditate and also talk to God while doing breast walking. So I will continue that. I will continue that. I will continue to eat healthy as well. I got rid of rice. I'm not eating rice anymore for five months now. Mm. And um, yeah, be I, I'll I'll be more positive and helpful. Uh, and be sensitive with the people around me and uh, be thankful for everything because a lot of things, uh, not so good things are happening around. And whenever I check Facebook, the post, if someone is posting really good and they're really trying their best to be good as well, I would like the post. I would send also a heart. And uh, sometimes I would comment because nowadays it's easy to be bad than to be good so i would like to encourage people who are trying their best to be good and to change for the better so i would love to do that for the rest of my life and also gr uh, grow old gracefully <laughs> doing things that i love you know that i love to sing i love to dance i love to spend time with family i love to travel so i hope i get to do those things for more years to come mm. Awesome. Love it. Mice, I really appreciate your time today. Um, you've definitely shared some really inspiring wisdom today. Um, I've saw, I saw you, you know, build up BMCM and you're thriving, you're pivoting and you're doing all these other amazing things. You're growing once again. And uh, not only that, you know, you have that grace about you. You still have that positive aura and you're still giving back to the community at the same time. So I really commend you on that. And uh, once again, I really appreciate your time today and uh, thanks for sharing your wisdom with us and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you, Kwa. Thank you, Kwa. Oh. More power to you be relentless. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers.